Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. When I was growing up, a trip to the DMV was not for the faint of heart. I tend to block out some painful memories, but I do remember that at that time we had only one DMV in the county down at the foot of Delaware Avenue. And to put it mildly, the lines were usually pretty long. I knew I was in trouble when my parents dropped me off to get my first driver's license and they said I should have something to read while I was waiting in line. Then they handed me a copy of War and Peace. If you think that's bad, a kid was getting out of a car next to me and I heard his mom say, if you're not out today, we'll drop a sandwich off to you tomorrow. And the clerks, they all had to go through this course taught by the CIA in psychological warfare. Excuse me, sir, have you decided if you're going to use your middle initial or not? You're not? Wrong answer. It's on your insurance card. Come back tomorrow, redo all of these forms, and you might want to bring a new book to read. Well, after years of counseling and a good Jesuit education, I'm proud to say my phobias concerning dealing with government agencies have mostly been cleared up. Now, as far as the DMV is concerned, at least in Erie County, I'm happy to be able to report that we no longer have to bring a good book or a lawyer to get past the visit in good shape. Uh, as counterintuitive as it might seem, uh, the Erie County Clerk's Office, which runs our local Department of Motor Vehicle Offices and a whole bunch of other stuff, is actually on our side. Yes, a government agency that wants to help be still my heart. And purely by coincidence, what do you know? We happen to have our county clerk right here to talk about the big picture in Erie County. Welcome, County Clerk Mickey Kearns to the show. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wow, that was a great introduction. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. <laughs> we have a, a DMV uh, office here in the Eastern Hills, and I, I got to tell you, I've had nothing but good experience. The people are nice, and I've never had to wait more than about 15 minutes or so. I mean, obviously, some people hit it at the wrong time, and you know, you have to have your paperwork in good, you know, order. But uh, I can't can't believe how far it's come, and, and how it's not what it used to be. It's it's actually not a bad experience going through that process. Phil, I remember when I got my permit, I went to the Ellicott Square building, and my Aunt Helen, who was my godmother, uh, worked at that facility. And there weren't uh, satellites, and there weren't uh, these uh, other facilities where you can go and get transactions done. And, and there's a positive side to that uh, in, in a good way. And just becoming the new Erie County Clerk, I was sworn in in December, uh, we not only have responsibilities dealing with the Auto Bureau, we're an agent of the state. Phil, this is not your parents' uh, auto bureau or DMV. Many people don't know. We're an agent of the state, so we have to work with the state of New York, uh, but we have many different satellites. As we stated earlier, the Eastern Hills Mall, uh, we're downtown, uh, we're in Chittawaga, and I'm proud to say that we are now opening up on Saturday uh, in Tonawanda uh, at our uh, plaza out there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to change uh, hours to make sure it's more flexible to give people the flexibility. If we look today in the state of New York, our Erie County Auto Bureaus, we're the only auto bureau that has two locations open up on a Saturday, believe it or not. And we're looking to expand that above and beyond. Uh, my job is going to be to bring good customer service, to have oversight, but it's not only the Auto Bureau, uh, we have a registrar's office. I just reported to the uh, legislature the other day, and I'm very proud of this, being a former businessman, I was a vice president of a company before I got into politics, that we're reporting 11% growth over our budget in six months. 11% revenue generator. We sent approximately about $9 million to the county this year, so the more we do, and, and the more positive experience people have, uh, the better it is for our county taxpayers. So. Uh, I'm learning a lot, this is a big operation, uh, but we're gonna use technology and I'll explain a little bit more how we're gonna try to cut the wait times down and how we are making progress and we're changing the way people perceive the Auto Bureau. Now, you started out, uh, you were um, a councilman on the south side mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. went to the state assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, now you're in charge of a rather large portion of the county um, in, in your office, it's county services. 
How do those jobs compare? I mean, sure. it, 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 there's different nature. Uh, there, there's one thing that uh, Congressman Higgins will tell you, and I'll tell you, and anyone who's been a, a Buffalo Common Council member, it's the toughest job you'll ever have. Uh, it's constituent service. Mm -hmm. uh, I never got support of the parties. I ran as an independent, and I was able to win those elections time and time again uh, because we gave good customer service. When I went to the state assembly, um, the first thing I did is I met with Sheldon Silver and I told him on the first day I was not going to vote for him. He uh, was a corrupt leader uh, and I conveyed that uh, to people. I didn't make that uh, a secret. I didn't go to Albany and hide and then come back and said, look, I'm fighting corruption in Albany. I fought corruption in Albany. I was one of the first people to ask for Sheldon Silver to resign. In a positive way, Sheldon Silver is no longer the speaker. Um, he uh, is now begging for mercy. Uh, he was just convicted once again uh, by a jury of his peers. Uh, and that's something I'm very proud of. But once again, I didn't get an office in my first week. So Phil, in order to uh, maintain uh, being elected, I had to have good customer service. I had to run on the Republican line as a Democrat because the Democratic Party didn't even want me to run on that line as a, an assemblyman. So I must be doing something right. When I ran for clerk, I ran as on the Republican line, and my mantra is, this is not a political office. I'm not voting on policy. Uh, we are giving people good customer service. So to me, the consistency, whether I was a council member, assemblyman, and now, is I'm trying to improve the office. I'm trying to generate revenue. And I don't put the parties first. It's the taxpayers. That's why I'm there. That's the only reason why I've been elected. It's never been a party. It's been the taxpayers who put me in office. And I don't want to let them down. And I want to do a good job. Well, as a, as a former businessman, you have an appreciation for efficiency. In, in running operations and, and government has a reputation of not being the most efficient uh, animal in the kingdom uh, mm -hmm. so you have to approach it from the, the perspective of having that experience of coming from the business world and, and saying okay look we have to look at this and say you know no more waste you know we have to make our policies more efficient we have to service our customers, if you will, more efficiently. Is it, is it a difficult world of politics and government to maneuver those considerations? Here's what I will say. Um, when I came into office, we had the unfunded mandate of the recertification uh, where people, uh, the passage of the SAFE Act uh, five years ago, I voted against that because it wasn't a transparent process. But unfortunately, five years later, when I came in, uh, many of those people would have to register with the state of New York. We had to do that. The state didn't reimburse us for that. Many transactions that we do on behalf of the state, they don't reimburse us. It's about 12.75% we get for each transaction. But here's, here's the thing that's very, very interesting. When I came in, and you talked about how jobs interrelate, I was chairman of the finance committee as a council member. The first thing I did, and I learned this in business, is I want to look at all the financial accounts. And this job, you need experience. I'm on the phone with Albany almost every day talking about issues. And because they're, you know, we're an agent of the state. And we did a financial audit internally. It didn't cost taxpayers any money. Phil, I was the first person to identify $1.5 million, which to me is a lot of money. A lot of money. That money was sitting there uh, in an interest-bearing account getting about $800 to $900 a year. Took that money and we're going to the legislature and we're gonna take that and we're gonna reinvest it in the office uh, and new equipment so people can have better service. And uh, remember, we're in competition with the state, but that's not gonna cost the taxpayers anything because uh, we're revenue neutral. In addition to that, uh, we know that over the next four years, uh, we are going to have uh, unprecedented uh, amount of people coming in. We're at our high watermark. So we went from last year, 40,000 people renewing their license up to 130,000 people. I made a business decision, did an analysis, and I said, we have this extra money over here that's not gonna cost taxpayers any money. We went out working with the legislature and we were hire, able to hire 11 additional people. Because I was able to do that, one, we're gonna retain our dealers and that's gonna generate more revenue. They're happy because we gotta get, when people are buying cars, they gotta get in and get in out. Two, we want the lines shorter, just like what we talked about. 
We're going to be able to open up at North Towns because of that. But three, the customer, I said this, is on the top of the pyramid for me. Uh, coming from business, if you're in the private sector and you don't do a good job, the customer goes somewhere else. In this instance, they can go to the state of New York. So for me, I take this job as a challenge, but taking all those years of governmental experience and putting them together, I feel as though that I'm in the right place and I'm where I should be at. Well, we have about a minute left in this segment. If everybody were, re to, were to renew locally with our offices here in Erie County, how much w w would that bring into the county in terms of revenue as opposed to going and renewing through the state? About $1.5 million. And that's money that goes into our roads. We've seen a lot of potholes out there that would go into roads. It goes into other departments. And essentially, it keeps taxes low. Uh, it goes right into the general uh, budget. Uh, so that's a positive thing. Anytime we can keep taxes low, as you know, for business and for people, we have a senior population. It's always a good thing, Phil. OK. Uh, one last question. You said that the uh, renewals have come up from 40,000 to like 135,000 mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. Why the change? Well, uh, I may ha need a little bit more time to talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new uh, Real ID law. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, September 11th, the federal government mandates that each state becomes compliant. That was in 2005. Uh, new York State being a little bit of slow, uh, they came in, in compliance of October of 2017. Okay. And it has to be completed by 2020. So we're seeing uh, a number of people, if you do not have a Real ID uh, or an enhanced ID, uh, you will not be able to fly domestically. Uh, mm -hmm. You will not be able to go to Canada. And us being a border uh, county mm -hmm. to uh, a border state to Canada, it's very, very important. So New York State did not comply until October of 2017, even though it had from uh, 2005. And now we're feeling the wrath of that. And based on my business experience, uh, one of the things that we've, we've done, and other clerks throughout the state, they're in shock that I was able to get uh, 11 new civil service employees. Um, they said, how did you do that? And that was governmental experience. Making my case to the legislature, letting them know how important this is, and looking at the revenue. Those new jobs are revenue neutral. Uh, when I reported to the legislature the other day, um, we're over 11% uh, of our revenues from our budgeted revenues. Now, I didn't make that budget. So I had to go in with a budget that was made last year and based on what we're doing, we're 11%. I think we could be at 15% mm -hmm. if things go well, and maybe a little higher. Okay, well, we're, we're out of time for this segment. We'll, we'll come back here very shortly and talk about some of the other services that the Erie County Clerk's Office renders to Western New York. Back right after this.